would like to read to you today from Child's Own Book of Great Musicians, Frédéric François Chopin, The Story of the Boy Who Made Beautiful Melodies. This book is by Thomas Tapper, and he wrote it in 1917. As long as we live and keep in touch with the works of the great composers, we shall love more and more the music of Frédéric François Chopin. It will be pleasant to learn from time to time something about him. Perhaps we may begin by learning that he was born in a little village in Poland, not far from the city of Warsaw. Here is a picture of the house in which Chopin was born. Chopin's father, a Frenchman by birth, was a schoolmaster. The boy's mother was a native of Poland. From the time when he was a little boy, the future great composer loved his mother's country and the people just as much as he loved the dear mother herself. The father knew that his little son was musical, so he took the greatest care to have him taught by the best teachers. He watched over him quite as Leopold Mozart watched the progress of Wolferol, and as Mendelssohn's mother guided Felix and Fanny in their first music lessons. Here is a picture of little Chopin playing for a group of boyhood friends. Chopin was only nine years old when he first played in public. It is said that he created quite a sensation. But like all those who know that talent is something to be worked for, he did not stop studying just because his playing was pleasing to other people. In fact, it was just on that account that he began to work all the harder. Then there came a great change. He left his home and went to Paris, where he lived for the rest of his life. Even though he was but a youth of 21, he had already composed two concertos for the piano. These he had played in public to the great delight of all who heard him, but especially of his countrymen. You see, Chopin's going to Paris was a strange journey. The boy was leaving his mother's country and going to the land of his father. Like Joseph Haydn, who went away at the age of six, Chopin never lived at home again. But... He did not reach Paris a stranger. The world of music had heard of him, and some of its great ones welcomed his coming. During his boyhood, Chopin played much in public, journeying to some of the great cities of Europe, among them Vienna, Berlin, and Munich. Therefore, when he played in Paris, it was as an artist. Here, as at home, he charmed everyone by the beauty of his music and the loveliness of his touch. He possessed the true piano hand. It was somewhat narrow. The fingers were long and tapering. It seemed at once strong and vigorous, yet delicate and sensitive. Indeed, Chopin's music is of just these qualities. It is strong in its nobility, delicate in its sentiment. One would think that to arrive in Paris and to be welcomed by the great ones would make everything easy, but it was not so for Chopin. Only a few people were present at his first concert, and for quite a while, he had no pupils. Indeed, it was all so discouraging that he made up his mind to return to his beloved Poland. His friend, Franz Liszt, begged him not to go. Others, too, urged him to stay in Paris. One friend who met him in the street as he was about to leave advised him, as did the others, to stay in Paris. But no, he was going home. But said this friend, first come with me to visit a true lover of music. So Chopin went with him to the house of Baron Rothschild. Here he played so charming the company with his music that ever so many of them begged him for the privilege of lessons. And so all in a moment, his troubles blew away, as troubles often do. Here is a picture of Chopin playing in the home of a prince. Do you wonder what kind of a man the little Polish boy became after he found success in Paris? One person said about him, Chopin talks little and rarely about music, but when he does speak of music, one must listen to him. Another said, he is reserved and quiet, especially among strangers, but among his friends he is witty and full of sly humor. But his thoughts were not for words. They did not weave the pretty phrases of idle talk. They were busy making nocturnes.
waltzes, mazurkas, impromptus, and many other kinds of music that we shall learn to love as we hear them. Music was Chopin's true speech. The world soon learned to love what he said in it, and it will always love it. See how beautifully he wrote his music? There was neither telephone nor telegraph in those days, yet it did not take long for another composer, Robert Schumann, who lived far away in Germany, to learn that a genius by the name of Chopin lived in Paris. The post carried to Schumann a copy of Chopin's first printed music. This was a theme taken from Mozart's opera Don Juan, which Chopin arranged with variations for the piano. When Schumann played it to his friends, everyone exclaimed, how beautiful it is. Then someone said, Chopin, I never heard the name. Who can he be? So we see that his thoughts printed as music flew like winged messengers to carry news of him to others in distant places. And people not merely asked, who can he be? But they found out who he was and kept passing the news on and on until finally it has reached us. Chopin was never a robust person, though he was well and busy most of his life. But in the last years, he suffered much from illness. This led him to travel to many places from Paris for the good of his health. Chopin was devoted to Poland, the beloved land of his birth. Here is a picture of the great composer who has fallen asleep at the keyboard and is dreaming of a glorious future for Poland. While it is true that Chopin was ill in the last years of his life, we must notice that he kept right on with his work. He played and composed just as he had always done. Chopin died in Paris, October 17th, 1849. That is some of Child's Own Book of Great Musicians, Frédéric François Chopin, The Story of the Boy Who Made Beautiful Melodies, by Thomas Tapper. Do you like to make up music? How does it go? <laughs>